Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and the first of a two-part tutorial video where I'll be painting a beautiful light and bright budgerigar scene. I'm splitting the tutorial into two parts since I decided to paint the foreground in ink and the background in watercolour and thought it would make sense to treat these two areas as two separate tutorials. This also came as a suggestion in the comments of my recent turtle painting so I thought I'd test it out and I hope you enjoy the video. Let me know in the comments below if you prefer this slower and more easy to follow tutorial in two parts or if you'd rather see the whole painting sped up to fit into one video. As always all the art supplies I use today will be listed in the description box below as well as the reference photo from Pixabay which I chose because of the beautiful lighting. So let's get on with it. I started out with a pencil outline sketch on my watercolour paper and taped down each side to get a nice border. I started out by mixing together some black and sepia ink to fill in the darkest area of the budgie's face. So that was his eyes and the dark feathers around them. I used my dip pen to apply this as this gives a really fine detail point. But if you haven't got a dip pen then you can always make do with a fine liner so long as it's waterproof. The benefit to using waterproof ink is that once it's dry it won't smudge or bleed out when you add water. When this ink was dry I could then go in and add my first layer to the budgie's head. I wanted to use the wet in wet technique so that I could get a nice smooth spread of colour without any harsh edges. So I applied clean water down first and then dropped in a really light mixture of yellow and green ink. I did leave an area on the top of the budgie's head clear of ink so just use the white of the paper as that's going to act as a highlight. Then I went in and added some dilute grass green ink to the right side of the budgie's head and softened out those edges again using clean water. Whilst the paper was still wet it was a good time to add in a little bit of yellow ochre around the budgie's beak. I then went in and added some dark green ink to the outside edge of the budgie's head. Here I also drop in some of that green ink to indicate some feathers on that right hand side of his head. I also use that same green ink to add in some more layers and colour to the sides of the budgie's head. making sure to leave any highlights free of ink so that it would really add contrast later on. Next it was time to move on to the budgie's body and for this again I used the wet in wet technique so pre-wet the paper and then dropped in that grass green ink again. I used short flicky motions with my paintbrush and tried to go in the direction of feather growth. Even though this is a looser style of painting the wet in wet, I still wanted to give the impression of feather direction and a little bit of texture as the paper started to dry. With that base layer down it was then time to start building up some values and I did this whilst the paper was still damp by adding in a more concentrated grass green. I like to use my inks a bit like watercolour so I like to build up the values in layers as I think this really helps to add depth and contrast. At this point I also start to put in some feather detail and drag my paint from the wet area onto the dry area just using a flicking motion with my paintbrush again. Once the ink is dry these lines will be permanent which is why I like working in ink when I've got a watercolour background to do because they won't budge when I go and put that in later. So now it's time to put in that beautiful turquoise colour on the top of the bird's beak. There was also an area of blue underneath that bright turquoise so I was careful to put that in with a fine paintbrush as well. And then I add some brown mixed with sepia to the base of the bird's beak. The paper's dry at this point so we're working wet on dry 
and there's no chance of any of those colours bleeding out into the pale yellow areas. It also gives us a lot more control and makes sure that we can get the detail we need to. I also layer some of that blue ink on top of those darkest feathers that we put in in the first place. Next I go in with some diluted brown ink and just darken up the side of the bird's face. I also drop some of this in on the sides of the beak as well and soften it out with clean water on my paintbrush. The reference photo for these budges was so bright and beautiful and almost glowed and I really wanted to try and replicate that in my painting. So before I went in with any darker values, I went in and added some yellow ink. I added this to the chest area as well as the area under the budgie's beak. This helped to brighten the painting up a bit and really helped it to glow. I decided to add some more yellow to the area above the budgie's beak. Being careful though to soften it out with clean water as I still wanted to keep that highlight on the top of his head. And now it's time to go in and add another layer to the budgie's chest and darken up some of those values. So again I pre-wet the whole of the budgie's chest and then dropped in some darker green ink which I'd mixed in a little of that grass green with a really small amount of black. Again, I'm not covering the area completely smoothly, I'm dropping it in and leaving some gaps in between to give the illusion of feathers. I also switched up from my regular paintbrush to using my water brush at this point. I like using this with ink and especially with feathers. It gives me a greater degree of control over how much water I apply and it's also got a nice point to it which is really good for details. Now whilst I was waiting for that layer to dry, I went in and put a base coat on the budgie's tail. But what I didn't do is move the camera down so it's not all in frame. I will talk about that in a bit more detail later on in the video. For now though, I'm going on to paint the budgie's claws. And for this, I'm using my water brush again and just adding in some yellow ochre and some grass green. So here's the tail and I did put down just a base layer of the grass green to start with and gradually built up layers much the same as I did for the budgie's body. I used sepia tones to do the outline feathers on either side of the green feathers, making sure that I left a little white gap between them so you could see the detail. I then carried up this sepia colour and some yellow ochre as well to the top part of the budgie's wing. And added in some more sepia to the budgie's claws. It's really important that those dark areas are as dark as they need to be. So I add in a couple of layers to make sure they really pop. paint the tail I had reverted back to my regular paintbrush as it gives me more control and I like to use the wet on dry method when doing detailed fine areas like this. It's also a lot easier to get more concentrated ink on your brush than if you're using a water brush where the water is constantly flowing through it. So now it's time to go and build on those first layers that we put in on the head and build them up a bit. So I go in and add another layer of that grass green to the right side of the budgie's head. I still keep it quite soft so make sure that I soften any edges with clean water. I also go in and add some yellow ochre again to the area under the bird's neck and around his beak. 
it's really important to add the right shading on the outside edges of the beak here to make it look 3D and realistic. Otherwise the beak just looks like it's sitting on top of the feathers rather than being part of them or coming out from them. I'm also adding in here some more of that yellow and grass green mix and blending it out to a really light area on the top of the budgie's head. I continue to build these values and contrast working on the side of the budgie's face now and adding in more sepia and green tones. Now I'm moving on to my fine detail brush. I use this to neaten up the smallest detail areas like those dark neck feathers, as well as the budgie's claws. I also use it to add detail to the budgie's beak. Now at this stage I always like to take a break and a step back to look at my painting with fresh eyes and after doing this and comparing it to the reference image I felt that my values weren't dark enough so I decided to add another layer of that darker green ink to the budgie's chest. I focus my attentions on the darkest area of the bird's chest nearest the branch and use my water brush again to apply that green and black mix of ink. I softened out the ink edges using the water from the water brush and once that base layer was wet again I could then drop in colour without having to worry. When I was happy with the darker value of the bird's chest, I could then work on the feathers in the same way. And for this I just added some light glazes, just to change the overall tone of the tail. I used the same method to go back in and change up the values on the budgie's face. So I added in some more yellow ochre mix and also some more yellow ink underneath the bird's beak. I continued with this yellow ink working it down onto the top part of the bird's chest feathers to help blend it all together. And all that was left to do after that was to add some last minute feather details to the budgie's wing before this first budgie was complete. And I'm quite pleased with how he turned out but there are still two more budgies to paint before I can do the background. Don't panic though, you won't have to sit through both of those as well as the method will be the same as for the first budgie. So I thought I'd show you a quick look at the first stages of budgies number two and three so you can see how they're going to look on the page and then I'll finish them off off camera so they're ready for the watercolour background tutorial for the video out on Friday. So if you'd like to see how I got on with the painting of the budgies or if you'd like to see the watercolour background tutorial that will complete this painting please subscribe to my channel if you're new and hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload a new video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as well if you liked it and comment below whether you prefer a slower tutorial in two parts or a faster video in one part. Thank you so much as always for watching, take care of yourself, have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!